Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. We do have another bolo today. Today, we're going to talk about Wacky Packs. Now, if you don't know, they've been around since 1967 was the first series. They have hit some phenomenal prices. When you see the prices on these, you're really going to be surprised. They've basically skyrocketed in the last five or six years. So we're going to hop over the screen right now, and we're going to touch on Wacky Packs. So here we are. This is the first item here. This is a lot of all of the series packs, wax packs, from the second series through to the 16th series, which probably in the late 70s, I think, 16th series came out. 1967 was the first, second, and I think maybe even the third series. These are by Topps. If you don't know, Topps is one of the leading producers of baseball, basketball, sports cards in general, as well as a lot of these non-sports and movie-related cards like this one here. So this lot went for $3,050. If you don't know much about these, they've reissued them since 1967. They're still making them. There are some cards that were pulled. There are some others that were actually limited in production or were only released in certain areas or were changed later on in the set. So some of them in mint condition can go for some horrendous amounts of money. This is one single sticker graded a 10, which is the best card you could possibly imagine. The highest grading. Um, does it have a population? Let's just see what the population is on this one. If it oh, doesn't have it on the back. Nope. Um, but anyway, it went for $2,650, 17 bits, legit sale, 100% legit sale. So just an idea on the price. Now, you're going to have to really know your cards. You're going to have to pay attention to the dates. There are many sites online that you can go to that will actually be able to help you distinguish these um, from other versions of it. Just type in Wacky Packs Guidebook or Online Guide, and you will find the main site pretty much directly. It shows all the uh, ins, outs on these cards. Again, even the newer ones can go for some money, but the ones um, back in the 60s are the best ones. I remember, I think, series like maybe eight or something, maybe, I think came out like 75 were the first ones I got. I stuck these all over the place as a kid. Loved these things. I'd invest, you know, most of my, my uh, allowance for the week into stuff like this. So anyway, this was a cool thing to me. This one's $1,000. Now, this one's a miscut, uh, meaning it wasn't punched all the way through, or actually it was punched all the way through. Um, in some cases, the machine that punched out just the sticker so you could peel off the sticker went too far, and it punched the entire center out, so it wasn't a card anymore. And other times, it, it wouldn't actually stamp it at all, and you couldn't even pull off the sticker. It wasn't die cut anymore. So we usually just trashed those or stuck them all over the place. Um, one thing to think about, too, if you see these stuck on the things, don't mess with it. You only want the cards that are in good condition. Um, those are the ones that you want. You don't want to mess with anything else other than that, in my personal opinion. Another one, $909, Cracked Jerk. So it's just an interesting um, whole idea and concept on some of these. You know, a lot of these were touchy subjects. Some of them were banned because of some of the violence it showed on some of these cards. So if you didn't know, this has been a mainstay of non-sports collectibles for a long time, these cards right here. Here's just another pack. Now, this is the 16th series. Yeah, so I probably had the 11th or 12th series in 1975. I was like six when I first saw one of these, I think. So very interesting. Nice cards. This is a high grade. This is an 8 out of 10. The population, pop, means population. There's only one of one this high. That means only one other person has graded one of these packs that graded an 8 out of the entire company that grades these. Now, that's a little uh, misleading because many companies grade these, so that's just a population by this grading company. So there may be tons of them from another grading company. So, But anyway, it sold for $800, so... Now, here's some knockoffs, kind of. They're like uh, lost wacky packs. Um, forbidden titles or ones that you couldn't put, or maybe even made-up new ones. I'm not really sure on this one. I've only run across a few of these in the past before. But instead of tops, it has the word the and then lost wacky packs. So it's kind of like a knockoff, like a bootleg version. This kind of stuff still will sell. This one went for a 1000 bucks. They sold one. They have one more of this. Another one. This is just a lot of unopened green wrapper series. These are 74, 75. I couldn't pin them down other than looking at the cards, in my personal opinion. I think, though, they use the same wrappers in many cases. So the same wrapper may have been around like three or four different series of these cards, just so people would know. Or they rehashed the series with another wrapper. 
Now you can see the Topps logo and the one before it was the. So they tried to copy that. So this one's $710 for 27 unopened packs. 36 packs goes to a box. So this is a pretty good chunk of a box. These people won't open those packs. Now the only drawback and worry on some of these, some people open these up. They'll take out the good cards and then reseal them very carefully. If you don't know what you're looking for, you could get skunked on stuff like that. So be very careful. Just another uh, set here. Now, Topps made poster series, too, that were fold-out posters. They also had movie posters, which were random movie posters. So this kind of thing was very popular. Then I remember the Star Wars one I had at Jaws, Animal House, the whole works. And it's basically a large version, a fold-out poster of a actual artwork from one of the cards. So it's just rehashed artwork, but in a new format. More wacky packs. It's hard to say on the series, as I said, because they did use some of the same wrappers for a, a few times. So there's 20 packs, 643 bucks. Here's another pack here, 16th series. Again, they look alike, some of these. So 16th, 15th series, it's possible that they had the same wrappers from what I've seen on some of these. $400 on this one. Here's another one. Um, this one's from Series 3. Basically $270 on this one. Um, it's off-center a little bit as well, too. It's an 8.5 graded out of 10, so it's pretty darn good grade. Next one, 1974, fifth series, Big Daddy. I remember some of these because it's just in the range when they were coming out when I was a child. Uh, this one's $250. It's a high grade one, though. This is an area, if I had first series, second series, third series, that I probably would send these in to have them PSA graded. Now, if you have an Amazon account, you can actually do it through Amazon with a discount straight through the PSA organization. Let's pop on to the next one. Um, another one here. This is Fink. Uh, this is from the 67 series. It's got the card number, the whole works. This is a 9 mint. Population 1 of 11. So there's only 11 of these total at this grade. It says there's um, just one graded higher. So there's only one at 10 of this specific card in all of their grading. A lot of people don't grade these. A lot of people have no clue that these things are worth that much money. I do run into them. You are going to see them. You are going to see them at auctions, flea markets, um, maybe even garage sales. They do show up. I promise you, I do find these. Average price, I may pay a dollar or so for some of these cards, depending on the series, of course. Uh, many people have no idea on the clue on age on these. Sometimes I find mixed lots of these from like a 10-year time span, too. So it's something to look for. You're going to find them occasionally. The 1967 ones are pretty scarce, but I do run into some of these. I run into the mid-70s and through the 80s eras more than anything else, though. So, But I do find them, and you can make a ton of money on these. Now, here's a Top 79. Now, they have first series sticker box. This is not the first series. First series came out in 67, so I'm not sure on what the difference is. They were all stickers for the whole length of time. Somebody just got that in there wrong. This is 36, actually a whole unopened box, $200. This is later on. This is like maybe series 18 or 19, maybe somewhere in that range, I would gather. Maybe even a little higher than that. Here's a 1974 mint condition. This is graded 10. The highest you can get, 187. Uh, it's a Tufts Bad Zooka. So rather interesting here. And the last one is a fun pack. Now, you can find fun packs for anything. They even made them into the 90s with collector cards in them for Marvel um, and Universal Studios cards in it as well, too, with the horror monsters. So Frankenstein, Dracula. Star Wars are in this one, as well as Wacky Packs. So I thought that was pretty interesting that they had those. And you can see the um, backs of some of these here. So very interesting. Kind of surprised that they would have these in here too. So And it's usually a mix. You can see it's half and half. And it would have been made to be purchased in bulk like this. And you would just hand these out for Halloween instead of candy. There's candy in them too, as we all know. There's gum inside of them. So anyway, 130 bucks basically on this lot here too. So anyway, pay attention to these. Don't get skunked if they're telling you the first series. Look into it. You can find these. You will find these if you look for them. These will show up sometimes at even savers. Um, I've seen them on Craigslist and Facebook on occasion as well, too. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you go. There's another item that we do look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.